here at the top of this podcast, we're going to play some sounds. And I want you to say what they are out loud the moment you recognize them. Okay, are you ready? Here's the first one. Now, of course, you know what that is. It's a radio tuning in. This one may be a little bit more difficult, especially if you're under the age of, say, 35. Yes, an LP album. You remember those vinyl records. What was the first vinyl record you ever purchased? Mine was Boston. And then there was this song. It was a big hit back in 1979. Well, as we all know, video didn't exactly kill the radio star, but it certainly changed the radio industry. But I have to tell you, there's a new game in town. This is a two to $300 million industry that's doubling revenues every single year. Think about that for just a moment. In five years, this is going to be a billion-dollar industry. Yes, with a capital B. I'm talking about, of course, podcasts. And I can hear all you radio fans and enthusiasts tipping over right now. Okay, relax. Don't panic. Radio isn't going anywhere. People have been telling me for years and years and years that radio's dead. I can tell you it's not. I broadcast my shows on over 400 top stations from coast to coast and also around the globe every single day. And people have been writing off radio, I'm telling you, for decades. And it's still here. It's in our cars. It's in our showers. It's everywhere. It's in our phones. But what we're talking about today is just this fundamental shift, what we in the industry call the disruptors, in the way that people are listening to programs and what they're listening to. And in fact, there's a lot of money to be made in this booming business. And that's why I was super excited to do this podcast. Because if you think about podcasting right now, it's in its total infancy. And to get started, you don't need these big, expensive studios. What you need is a decent computer setup, a laptop will even work, a microphone, a great story, a little know-how, probably some talent too. But we'll get into all that in a little bit. Think about it this way. Podcasts are changing radio in kind of the same way that Netflix and on-demand streaming totally changed the way that we watch television. And the pace that the podcast industry is growing is just astounding. You can find just about anything and everything on a podcast. I mean, for example, are you a true crime enthusiast? And said she'd be at the station in 20 minutes. Jody would never arrive. They found her car, surrounded by her own personal effects, leading them to believe that the beautiful young reporter had been abducted. Or maybe fitness is your thing. Leslie's previous episode, number 21, which was the best ways to boost recovery time and avoid injury. And so today I'll be talking about the science behind muscle recovery. And don't forget about keeping up with technology. Now, you are listening to Commando On Demand, but you can also find Commando Tech News of the Day and also Tech News of the Week on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Believe it or not, podcasts were actually born back in the 1980s. It was called audio blogging back then. Wow. What a geeky little term that was. I'm audio blogging today. And it's really come a long way. Last year, surveys showed that more than 42 million Americans listen to podcasts on a weekly basis. I'm Kim Commando, America's digital pro. And in this special podcast, I'm going to speak with one of America's biggest media moguls. We're speaking with Bart Roselli. He's the vice president of media sales for Veritone One. Now, you may not have heard of Veritone One, but I have to tell you, it's one of our country's most powerful media advertising agencies. It's behind some of the most recognizable brands. I mean, for example, there's 1-800-Flowers. Know them. How about LegalZoom? Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. So how did podcasts really get their start? How do you start your own podcast? What exactly will this industry look like in, say, five years? How much money is really going to be made in the podcast world? Well, I have to tell you, we're going to answer all of those questions and more. By the end of this podcast, you are going to be a podcast expert. (laughs) 
So Bart, thanks for spending some time with us to talk about podcasting. I've done the research, but I can't really find the exact answer. What was the very first podcast? I mean, not just the first podcast. I'm talking about the very first successful podcast. <laughs> um, I think everyone would probably think a few different things. I think what everyone traces back to um, was really Adam Carolla back in the day, who kind of really made a big name for himself from that. Um, what people, the common person not familiar with the podcasting term, might more relate to the serial podcast, which is what really opened Pandora's box to people understanding and checking out what the podcast medium is. But I think some from a marketing perspective would look to like Adam Carolla. And I think the, the country as a whole would probably relate to serial. How many different podcasts are there right now? According to Apple, and it's a number that's obsolete pretty much every day because it changes and evolves. They say there's about 525,000 podcasts out there. Um, that is an insane number to even try to comprehend from, from that perspective. And I would say there's even more than that. But in terms of what ones are monetized, those range from one download to, you know, a million plus. But I would say the majority of the universe is probably within, you know, 50 to 100,000 podcasts. And the other ones are just tiny in their, their infancy stages. And how many people, I mean, with all these podcasts out there, and I know that when I go to on the podcast app or on Google Play, they're just, like you mentioned, this 526,000 number, right? It's just crazy. It's like, you know, imagine going into the old days in a record store and you had 526,000 records. You'd be like, okay, so which one do I pick, you know? And I don't want Paradise City. For some reason, that was playing when I got in the car this morning. I'm like, can't deal with that at 645. How, how do people go about finding a podcast that they want to listen to? I think that's that's an interesting question when sometimes when there's too many options, people get, you know, paralysis, you know, by analysis from that standpoint, too. But I think people are really just organically discovering it through word of mouth and what their friends are recommending from that side, as opposed to now there's various di different, you know, app hosting platforms. You have, you know, Stitcher and Apple, and most people will go into their Android or iPhone device. It's, just search and start to really just dabble into what shows make sense or what shows are their friends are listening to. And I think from there, that's where the evolution and, you know, really education is kind of like a self, it's a self-education process from that side. I think that's one of the things where people say, what do I listen to? How do I search? And it's not, there's not a table of contents, one site fits all that has all of that information. So I think that's why the industry has so much potential uh, to improve from an efficiency standpoint, but also the word of mouth power, which we all know is invaluable, is playing such a heavy role in how fast is the number of shows that are, are coming to life. You know, you're absolutely right about the word of mouth, because like, for example, a doctor friend of mine called me up and he's a big guy at MD Anderson Cancer Center. He's like, yeah, I'm looking for science podcasts. Do you know, I know any science podcasts I could listen to? And I'm like, well, not off the top of my head, but I'll see if I can find one for you. We were having dinner and my son is now 17. And I said to him, you know, have you ever wondered how the guy started Panera Bread? Because you eat a Panera Bread like once a week. Yep. Have you ever yep. wondered about how he came up with this idea for Panera Bread? And he's like, no. Yep. And he said, he goes, but didn't he just sell it for like a billion dollars? I said, yeah. I said, what was funny is the guy was in college. And he went into a convenience store. And as he was shopping around the convenience store late on a Friday night or something like that, how the story goes with his buddy, the guy who owned the store behind the counter said, hey, you guys, get out of my store. You're stealing from me. And so he decided yep. to open a convenience store a block away to try to put the other guy out of business and through yep. going in through all these things. But, you know, that podcast was how I built this. Built this, yep. Which I is, remember the episode specifically. Yep. Oh, and you know, it's just fascinating, isn't it? That, that you can it's, learn um, somebody's story. And I think what's, what's so amazing about the medium in general, why it is, you know, it just helps, you know, evangelize audio as a, as a medium is the fact that now audio can cater to a variety of different niche interests. Where before, um, hey, if I wanted to listen to tech, I'm listening to Kim Commando and I better have time 
during her specific day part to have that. But let's face it, we now live in a world that is basically on demand. We're always on the go. Our attention deficit is at an all-time high. <laughs> we basically are being distracted and pulled in different directions, whether it's you know TV and you have streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, etc. So everyone's attention is just fragmented in a variety of different ways, but it's an on-the-go medium. It's an on-demand medium. So you can take it with you where you want to go. And that's a very powerful tool. And we live in a society now that, frankly, we're just always moving six miles a minute. And I think it allows us to cater to that need and, frankly, interest because if there's other shows of content that you want to listen to, if you don't have the time during your schedule or how your work schedule works, you may never be able to have the chance to get exposed to it. So it now allows key influencers such as yourself and everyone else to really start to listen and get engaged with the type of content you're promoting. And, And I think that's really key, Bart, is that it's a niche product, right? So if I have an interest in science, I can go find a science podcast. If I have an interest in cancer, I can go find a cancer podcast or business or entrepreneurship. Or even if I'm a a young woman and I'm I'm just going to say it because it's one of the top podcasts out there is as I was traveling around, I decided that I would sample some of the top podcasts. So I went over to iTunes Mm -hmm. and, you know, you look at that long list of the hundred top (laughs) podcasts, right? And and there's the sports ones at the top and you and I've known each other a long time and and (laughs) I'm not a sports gal. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, you know, my idea of a tight end is that guy's butt going down the field. You know, that's about it. So I decided to look at this list of top podcasts and a one particular title caught my attention. And I sat there and I said, okay, number one, how did this get through the iTunes store? And number two, <laughs> what the heck are these two girls talking about? So I download it and these mm-hmm. two gals are talking about, well, sex toys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and the title of the podcast is Guys That I Blank. Yep. Yes, that you can fill it out. <laughs> and so yep. I okay, so I have to confess, I listened to it because this is my business for like eight minutes. Yep. I look down and like, after mm-hmm. eight minutes I'm like, you know, I just I, I just I'm just not into it. So that's yep. a niche that just did not fulfill my particular need in that case. <laughs> What's interesting with kind of the discovery tool and what ranks the highest is really unique. So right now there's, you know, a revolving algorithm daily that tracks and you can look search by categories and and iTunes and it resorts every day based on number of downloads being accessed. Now, what's unique about that is is that doesn't really, it gives you a directional knowledge of which ones are being the most downloaded at that current point in time. But obviously sports, you know, is always constantly top of mind, but during, you know, football season or other peak times of the year for sports, sports might have more podcasts in the top 10, 50, 100, because it's their time of year versus other shows that might have be launched like series related shows, like a serial or somebody like that. So how they're, you know, accessed by the public does play an impact onto what technically is a top podcast, but what you look at one day will be different the very next day. So it's kind of more of a directional tool to understand what the ongoing trend is on a daily basis. So since you're the expert at this, you've been in this industry a long time. I tell you, I look at the homepage of Apple iTunes under the podcast, and I sit there and I say, how can I be featured by iTunes? Is there a secret to that? I think what's probably unique uh, for you because you're a very, you're a brand in, in the space. For people that are getting into it, a lot of it is, from what I hear from these small influencers, is it's trial and error. And they are trying to grow their social following. A lot of people that come into podcasts usually kind of originate that become successful, had a strong social following, whether they were a blogger, famous in the past. And they're able to kind of pass that feed and share it outwardly uh, from a social perspective. And that helps really get your downloads and your numbers and your audience growing very quickly because you have a universe to kind of promote this with. For the people that are brand new, that's why they have to lean on, you know, networks for logistics and sales 
tactics and press releases and you know getting strong guests on their shows so that when they look in the description of that specific episode you know everyone's so trained nowadays and you know better than anyone that you know you go to a website how long do you have somebody's attention for so from even that like people are looking at the description and making a snap judgment on do i want to listen to this show on this podcast and if you have uh, peyton manning or you have you know two dope queens that now is featured on you know hbo it's going to resonate a little bit stronger with that notoriety so i think it's really a it's a not a one size fits all and it depends what your background is if you're an influencer by nature then you kind of have a little bit of a, a leg up and if you're not then you have to build your distribution organically and that will take a little bit longer than some other podcasts what's really fabulous and if you are getting into podcasting this is new to you is that national public radio there's this fantastic site training.npr.org yep. So if you're just getting started and you're wondering, like, how do I become a storyteller, which there's an art to this, to doing yes. a podcast. You just can't come on and, and ask people a series of questions and expect somebody to tune in for t 12 minutes or what have you. But speaking right. of the minutes, I've seen conflicting reports. Some people say that the best podcast is between 15 and 18 minutes. Other people say it's between 25 and 30 minutes. What has your experience hmm. been? The, well, I think it's, there's never one black and white answer. The default standard that kind of seems to be where you're pushing the point of attention span is usually 45 minutes or less. And a lot of that stems from how long can you retain somebody's attention span for a specific show. Now we know on radio, TSLs or time spent listening, you know, is really related to the connection with that influencer. So on podcasting, on demand perspective, it promotes listening a longer length because you're accessing it when you have the time dedicated to it. I know when I want to listen to a podcast, I'll look at the duration. If it's 52 minutes and I know my drive is 42, I'm probably not going to listen to it because I want to be able to hear it, you know, in succession all the way through completion. So that's kind of what's been heard. But there are shows and recaps that, you know, now you see the news outlets starting to get more involved with, you know, daily wrap ups from a Newsoft perspective get all your news information within a bite-sized chunk of 10 to 15 minutes. So I think 45 minutes is usually like the barometer. If you go above that, that's not to say shows won't work because you have a Joe Rogan who is an anomaly in itself. He's a million plus downloads per episode. His show is two and a half plus hours long. Jeez. And that is insanity to think about because you know, I love him to death, but I'm not listening to him for two and a half hours. You just don't have, you just don't have the time in the day. So, and understanding where, you know, ads get placed and all that perspective definitely factors in. But I think 45 minutes usually is kind of like where it currently sits. But of course, everything varies. And that's the best part about it is it's not a one size fits all, depending upon the content that you're promoting. So the way that you make money in podcasting is that you sell ads within the podcasts, right? And um, how many, so let's say we had a 30 minute podcast. Could that support, mm -hmm. what, three ads? Or could you actually do six ads? Well, I think you, what usually is the standard and what it was what it was five, six years ago is different than what it is now. So in the beginning with a new show, what you want to do is not interrupt the content. And the best part about podcasts compared to radio is that there's not ad pods, that you know there's 10, 15 people into it. There's not a huge defined clock set. <laughs> that your PDs and everybody else on the radio side have to kind of structure through. Um, so it's a little more a controlled environment from the influencer perspective. And usually that kind of promotes one pre-roll, which is like either before the content starts or a couple minutes in so people are engaged and then the ad comes in, or and one mid-roll spot. And then as the show starts to evolve based on duration, you can layer on additional spots. And right now I see most podcasts pretty much in the you know, one to two pre-rolls and one to two mid-rolls. They'll have a post-roll at the end, um, and that will be for promotional purposes or cross-promoting, you know, other podcasts from that perspective. And that's usually where it is, but I think what we want and what everyone preaches in the industry is you don't want to oversaturate it with ads because as soon as you do that, then it will start to, I think, turn people off a little bit. So there's a, 
point of diminishing returns balance that I think the industry is just carefully treading. Okay, so there's no doubt. Podcasts are the future. And when we come right back, the rate of growth is explosive. It's really like nothing we've ever seen before. But what does that mean for you? How can you succeed if you jump in on this exciting opportunity? Can you actually make money? Can you make a living doing podcasts? And what can you expect from this industry, say, over the next five years? Everybody has a book in them. That's what I always say. And I really am starting to believe that everyone has a podcast in them. Do you remember at the beginning of the podcast, I said that podcast revenues were $200 million and it would be a billion dollar industry by 2020? Well, that was from one research company. Another research company came out this past week, the Internet Advertising Bureau. Their numbers are a little bit different. I mean, they're still huge, don't get me wrong. They say that last year alone, podcast revenues hit a record of $314 million. That's an 86% increase from 2016. That's just crazy. By 2020, they say the revenues will be well over $650 million. Okay, not quite a billion like that other research study, but you can see where the trend is going. This particular study, the reason why I wanted to bring it up, shows arts and entertainment, technology, hmm, that'd be us, news, including politics and current events, and business podcasts are doing the best with more than half of the total advertising revenue. That's humongous. But what about the average Joe, the average Jane, looking to start their own podcast? How much money can people actually make? And be honest with us, Bart. Uh, One, I think if you're getting into podcasting for the money, I would say don't do it. You want to do something that you're passionate about. When you're passionate, as you know better than anyone, it's basically going to come through in the way you're delivering the message. Because in the beginning, if you don't have a strong social following or background and not a celebrity like most of us, then it's going to have to be about the content and your passion for what you're promoting, having it, having fun with it and making it engaging content. Um, so I think that is key and paramount. The most successful shows that aren't from a key influencer that are just making a name are the ones that really care about the content. They care about their listeners. They're communicating with their listeners through their social feeds, which creates that 360 holistic engagement with the audience. And that's, that's where the magic really happens. Plus, you know, the reads that these talent are delivering, they truly believe in the brands. They're going to go longer than most than what they can on radio because nobody's hyper monitoring, you know, the timestamps of when, okay, it's getting close to that end of that duration, you know, cut it off. They'll go two, three, four minutes sometimes on a brand. So those benefits really pay out from an advertiser's perspective. All right. So in 2023, where do you see, where do you see podcasting happening at that particular time? Right now, currently the industry, and these are all like numbers that you can find in the trades, saying it's about 220 million in billing, but it's growing, you know, year over year, significant percentage year over year by 2023 it's a billion dollar industry without a doubt um and just for the sheer volume of you know what we're seeing in terms of client interest performance um frankly the way the entire universe and you know the country is really engaging with them so i think the on-demand demand element lends to that so i think in five years it's a billion dollar industry and i think what we're seeing right now is even you have key big brands that never wanted to really look at it because it's hard to track it, understand it from a qualitative perspective and really get some numbers behind it. And that's always been the big bugaboo about the medium. They're starting to see the power of that and being having to reach out to their, you know, their customer base and engage with them in different manners. Plus podcasting in general is a younger medium. So you're, if you have think a continuity product, it's advantageous to get that customer into, you know, your brand's, you know, interest so that they can be a longer lifetime value customer from that side. So it's creating a lot of different exciting advertising opportunities for a lot of e-commerce brands, which are popping up every day, as you know. Yeah, they are. Um, So it's a really powerful tool. So I'd be curious, your thoughts came on, how have you seen it kind of just organically develop from your perspective, especially with, you know, your tech background and everything is, you know, sometimes it can be black and white and kind of knowing that it's this, you know, moldable medium. How are you kind of viewing it in this, this time of day? It's, it's exploding. It's absolutely phenomenal. 
uh, that I think that people are starting to embrace the medium in a huge way. I mean, I'm sure you remember when satellite radio hit, right? We had Sirius mm-hmm, and yeah. XM, and everybody said, oh, watch out, that that's going to put radio out of business, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and, and then we had HD radio, and they were saying that HD right. radio... Uh, you know, is going to put traditional radio out of business. And, you know, and we still mm-hmm. talk about radio going out of business. We've been doing this since 1950, <laughs> but it's still going on because we have radio yeah. in our showers, in our cars, wherever we go. But I think mm-hmm. we are truly on the cusp on the foundational mm-hmm. layer of something really huge to come. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure where it's going to be in five years. I mean, at some point, uh, now we have to go pick out our podcast. I'm thinking that there's going to be artificial intelligence that's going to deliver me the podcast that I might want to sample based upon yep. where I go, what I've done, my age, what I buy online. Because, you know, everything's all being tied in one one big database on all of us. What's interesting about it right now, what the real holdup, I think, just from a you know broader five, ten year perspective is really data. And we all know data is king. Uh, from the marketing perspective, but also to monetization, marketing efforts, who to target, who makes the most sense. And that's something still in the infancy stages. I can tell you from, you know, six, seven years ago, it's leaps and bounds from where it was. How there's not one governing body the way Nielsen governs radio so that when you say, oh, blah, 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 the King Commander show is on four or 500 plus you know, affiliates, you can quantify that in terms of a number based on PPM. With podcasts, there's not one universal standard. So you have some shows that might propose they have 100,000 downloads. And if you took that to a different network, it could be as high as 50, 60% less oh, wow. or more than that. So the industry is still trying to figure out, do they all want to adopt one universal standard? Um, which the IAB has kind of take steps towards that. And that's trying to look at a 24 hour look back window so that every time, you know, from a tech perspective, and I'm not the tech person, this should be you explaining it, but when every time they go to fetch the, the data, they're tracking a unique download based on that look back window. So some networks have five minutes, which is gonna promote a much larger number. And then some networks have an hour, two hours, five hours, six hours, and whatever that is, is important to understand because it's how you comparing you're comparing apples to oranges to bread baskets like it's all over the place and i think unless you're truly invested in the medium it might seem cumbersome to really try to understand that and i think that once we flip that switch and everyone either buys into it or universally agrees or it gets more standardized i think that will lend to more and more of the bigger brands adopting it because then they really care about that data and they want to know everything about who they're targeting. And right now you can directionally, but it's not quite there from the maturity standpoint. Podcasting is amazing because it allows, you know, key influencers such as yourself to really tap into a new audience and engage with people that may never have been exposed to, you know, content that people truly believe in. And it's an amazing medium that you can find literally anything you want to look at if you love UFC, if you love, you know, you can listen to sports news talk, all the stuff we have on the radio, but you want to learn how to do underwater basket weaving and other, you know, niche types of content, it is all out there and it will span from the average person all the way up to a celebrity influencer. And as you see the celebrity is starting to adopt it, everything that keeps happening in the industry further legitimizes as a nature. And from a marketing perspective, I can confidently tell you it's it's an area we see massive growth in and in five years it should be a billion dollar industry if we don't all screw it up (laughs) Um, but it's definitely something that i think really is the wave of the future and is only going to amplify audio from being that powerful a tool which you and i already know it is but now it's just it's just pouring more gasoline on the fire Hey, Bart, once again, thank you for being our guest on my podcast about podcasts. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? We'll have to do it again in, say, a year and see how far we've come. Now, if you are new to podcast listening, one of the things that you really have to do is just hit that subscribe button, because this way you get my Commando On Demand podcast, Tech News Today, Tech News This Week, and my daily consumer tech update on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't feel overwhelmed. It's really easy to do. 
If you're an Apple user, log into iTunes, choose your podcast from the drop down menu in the upper left corner. You can search the name of the podcast by just typing it in in the upper right search bar or take some time and scroll through the options. I know it may seem endless, but you might just stumble upon your next favorite series. For Android users, Google Play has an entire podcast section. You can use it to listen to your podcast and make sure that you download the Google Play Music app on your phone or tablet. Now, I've shared a lot of great information. If you have friends or family members interested in making podcasts, make sure that you share this episode with them. It's really easy to do in whatever app that you're using to listen to your podcasts. And remember, the best way to learn is by just doing it. Give it a try. Come on, I know you can do it. What do you have to lose? The more you listen to podcasts, I bet the more ideas you'll have and the better that you're going to get at it. And who knows, maybe one day I'll be listening to your podcast. Yes, I believe in you. 